my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel Homemade Mathematics. Today we're going to be taking a look at these puzzles I've been seeing all over Facebook that look like this. So whether you're a teacher looking for a fun way to practice solving equations, someone who's looking for some tips and tricks to solve these type of puzzles, or you just kind of want to treat them as flashcards and pause, work them out, play to see what the answer is, keep watching. I'm going to be starting with some slightly easier problems first, but stick around to the end to see the answer for this viral Facebook problem. I guarantee it's not what you think. I will be sharing my solutions and how I got those solutions for all of these puzzles. So if you want to try them on your own first, when I pull that first screen up, go ahead and pause it and then you can continue to see if you got it right. The first tip I'm going to give you with these problems is if there is a line where there's only one thing or one variable being used, like Dory plus Dory equals 18, you're always going to want to start there first. Since we know together they're going to be 18, we can split that in half and know that each Dory is worth 9. Now that we know Dory is 9, we can use that to help us with the equation below. We know 9 plus our turtle should get us 15. So what is our turtle worth? 9 plus 6 would get us 15, so now that we know our turtle is 6, we can find Nemo. So then we just have to figure out 6 plus what gets us 30, or 30 minus 6 would get us 24. We now know what each is worth, and that Nemo is worth 24. What we just did was the exact skills needed to solve an equation in algebra, except for instead of finding x or a variable, we're finding Nemo. These types of problems are a great, fun way to develop that skill early on. This next problem with Tom and Jerry does look a bit more complicated than last time, but we can actually start it the exact same way. You can see our top line, we have three Toms equal 60. So 60 divided by three split into each one of those Toms. We know each is worth 20. Then I can use that to plug into my next equation. If Tom is 20 and Tom and two Jerry's is 22, 22 minus 20 would leave me with two, split between two Jerry's, they would each be worth one. I can then use that in the equation below. Since I know Jerry's one, if I take that away from my 21, I'm left with 20 for those dogs. Now that I know what each thing is worth, I can go ahead and plug that in to solve my final equation. But you have to be careful. Because notice in the equation ab above, I had two dogs that are 20. So down below, I'm going to have one dog, which would be worth 10. Then we know Tom is 20 and Jerry is 1. We're going to use our order of operations. So multiply 20 times 1 first to get 20, plus 10 to get our final answer of 30. I had to throw a Mario one in there. If you don't know already, I'm obsessed with Mario. I've actually already created two videos on Mario games and the math in it. Um, I'll link those if you want to see them. For this problem, I actually started with the fact that Toad times Bowser is going to equal zero. So I know at least one of them has to be zero, which if you look in the line under, Toad couldn't be zero because we cannot divide by zero. So that means Bowser has to be zero. However, that didn't help me out a whole lot, but I did notice that Mario and Peach are equal, which if you look at my first line, we have Mario plus Peach plus Mario equals 36. Since they're all equal, we can just take our 36 divided by 3 to know that both our Mario and our Peach are going to be worth 12. I can then use that to find Toad. 12 divided by what would get me 2? 6. So now that I know everyone's value, I can go ahead and plug that into the below equation. 12 plus 0 plus 12 plus 6 would get us 30. Next one, we have a Pokemon example. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on any of these names. It's been a little while since I've Pokemoned. Just like the last one, they tell us two things are equal. Pikachu and Jigglypuff are equal, which in that first line, we have three of them equaling 39, so 39 divided by 3, each would be worth 13. I can then use that in my equation down below. 13 minus Snorlax equals 10, so 13 minus 3 equals 10. We know our Snorlax is worth 3. Use that down below. 3 times 2 would get us our Meowth, 
I think is what his name is, is 6. And now I can plug those all in down below. So we'd end up with 13 plus 6 plus 13 minus 3. With add and subtract, we're just going to go ahead and do those left to right to get a final answer of 29. Next we have Toy Story. This one I started with the equation where there's all numbers, Mr. Potato Head. 9 minus 8 is 1, plus 2 is 3. We can then plug that down below because we know Mr. Potato Head and Buzz Lightyear are equal. We can then use that up above to find out that our dino would equal 7. Then we can plug that in above above. We can plug in our 7 plus 3, so 10 equals our two Woody's, which would mean each Woody is worth five. Then our second to last equation, we have Woody is five plus our alien equals six. So our alien would be worth one. Plug them all in, five plus three plus one would get us nine. And the problem we've all been waiting for, the challenge where it says 99% of us will fail. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we're going to start where I have all the same variable, so three caterpillars equals 21, which means each would be worth seven. We can plug that in down below, subtract that seven from 19 to be left with 12, split that between our clocks so that each clock is worth six. We can then plug that six and seven down below. Six plus seven would get us 13, so 15 minus 13 would mean our flower is worth two. Hopefully, so far, so good. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our caterpillar is seven, our flower is two, our clock is six. So depending on how you did this, you either got 54 or 19. If you used order of operations correctly, you would have multiplied first, two times six is 12, plus the seven is 19. However, neither of those are right. Did you see what I did wrong? Take a close look back at that last line. If you look really close, you'll notice the caterpillar doesn't look exactly like the caterpillar above. Same with the flower, same with the clock. So here's my theory on what the answer should be. Starting with the flower, since I think that's probably the easiest, we know that one flower is two, and down below, it's not just one flower, it's actually two. So that should be worth four. Moving on to the clock. You notice we have our hands pointing to 12 and six in the original clocks, but it's pointing to 12 and five in the clock in our last equation. So before our clocks were worth six because it was pointing to six. Now it's pointing to five, so our clock should be worth five. Lastly, we have our caterpillar, which is the trickiest of them all. Our caterpillar is worth seven, at first I notice our caterpillar has a flower on, which is worth two, which would mean our caterpillar is worth five. Not only did our caterpillar before have a flower, it also is slightly smaller than you see the caterpillar in our last equation. So I also had to relate its size to a number. That's when I noticed the caterpillar had five segments. If each segment is worth a point and then the flower is worth two, that would get us a caterpillar of seven. You notice my caterpillar down below only has six segments, so he would be worth six. Now I should have all the correct values. Four times five is 20. 20 plus six is gonna get me 26. Did you get it right the first time or did this totally trick you like it did me? Comment down below if you got it and tag someone to challenge them and see if they'll get it on the first try. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for some more puzzles from me. Mm -hmm.